What's up, guys? We're here to talk about the latest chapter of My Hero Academia, chapter 285. And oh my gosh, it is a freaking crazy one. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Let's let's start with the introduction first. So you have me, David the Smash fan, and we have again, Hipster Paul. Or Japorian, as people call me now. <laughs> yep. Stop it. I, I actually want to ask this, it, 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 for people that, that are watching, they comment. His hair, if I'm incorrect, it's fine, but it looked blue. It's gray, but it looks fine. It's cool. But as, I swear it was blue originally, but he says it wasn't. Let the comments decide. Yeah. There you go. Well, What's it blue? Decide. What's it silver? I'm gonna say it's blue, but okay. So let's start here. So something really important happens in the beginning of this chapter that tells us the severity of what Deku was going through. Because there's a little flashback panel where it talks about how he only has about two or three like, big hits left at 100% with his arms before he may lose them or, or not be able to use them ever again. And then we see this flurry of like St. Louis Smash, Detroit Smash, all is at 100%. Just constantly hitting Shigaraki and so what what do you what do you think Paul do you think that, that his arms are gone now I mean I know he has it wrapped up in black with the black whip but do you think like they're unusable unusable no I think he might be able to withstand it I mean probably will have a big injury for now uh, who knows we'll just have to wait to see until the whole battle ends to figure out the repercussions of this but it looks like it's taking a lot of damage. I think they're still... He's still gonna be okay, but... I'm uh, We just have to wait, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what's what's gonna happen here. It's just... And and as he's doing this, we have... So the last chapter, we had uh, just a little bit of a, of a background. We found out that Alpha One knows something about the fourth user. And they think that it might be some sort of quirk that has... That might damage Deku. We haven't gotten too much into it. There's lots of theories going around, but we saw in that chapter the beginning of Bakugo basically changing how he is acting towards Deku. Like we had that funny little panels like with his hair like all in a fro, which was cool. But we saw Bakugo really taking a concern to Deku, which we've never seen before. Like all the time, even when he was like helping Deku or trying to see Deku's arrival or whatever it may be, he still was like acting like like Bakugo to him. But these past two episodes past two episodes, past two chapters, we've seen him act sincere, act caring to him. And that's like the whole reason why also this this chapter is called Katsuki Bakugo Rising or Uprising. <laughs> and so let's talk about it before we go before we go any further. Like what have you thought of Bakugo as a character like in these past chapters that he's been involved with Deku, it's been awesome. I mean, he is my favorite character of, all the, of my Hero Academia for sure. But being able to see how he is growing up a little bit more, and realize that it's not only about him; it's about Deku as well, and trying to help him out. Like the last chapter, it was great. The interaction between him and All Might, and trying to figure out that he actually does care for Deku. He doesn't see him as. As a lesser individual, I guess he, he really cares for him now, now that he knows the truth. And he's also growing up a lot to understand that, you know, he, he has to help him in order to feed. Well, Shigaraki at this particular point. Yeah. And Shigaraki is getting beat up. Like, and it's funny because he even states, like, he states that in the beginning, like, he's getting beat up and he has to go on defense, otherwise he'll get defeated. But he said, but it's not because of the other heroes that that basically wore him down and it's not because his form is incomplete it's basically because this power that that Deku has you know um, one for all is beating him and he and Shigaraki recognizes this and I think one major part big part of it is he, you see that you see Deku's not gonna let up but you see the the support that he's getting from Endeavor to Rocky Bakugo, and then this part actually solid solidifies like um, that these kids aren't really kids anymore. Next, when Rocklock is like saying, "What about your kids?" And he's like, "No, just go take care of our teacher." And he's like, "It's like I've acknowledged you like as as heroes. Like I'm not not a student anymore. I've already said that." And it's it's interesting to see like that impact that he had on him because Rocklock he can't do anything here. Like his power can't do anything while they're in the air. And we saw how he was like condescending in uh, way back in in season four, 
am. And he's like, why do we have these kids here? Like, this is a waste of time. And it, it's, it's awesome to see that they're acknowledging these kids now as actual heroes. And... Yeah. And now... I was going to say that part. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going to say, for me, I think that part was pretty... It was great. I think being able to see that they actually develop and have... They're not like beginner heroes. They actually are able to fight one on one. Well, I guess in this particular case, all together with Shigaraki, and they are also trying to protect the people they care the most for sure. And being able to have the recognition tells a lot about these kids. Yeah, and so this is where we have a twist in in here, and it it starts with uh, well, we'll get to that part. I, I already see your face, Paul. We'll get to that part. Because everyone's talking about it, um, we see that Shigur, uh, Shig- not Shigaraki, uh, Endeavor and uh, Bakugo shoot up to get near Shigaraki, and they time it to where they get to Shigaraki as soon as Deku lands a punch on him, and then is blown away, and then he's about to use Black Whip to pull him back. And at that point is when Endeavor comes and grabs him, and then uh, <clears throat> and then does his prominence burn. And he looks like he's like, I can't, he's, you look at the panel and Shigaraki's like screaming and he's like, oh, he's done. You're thinking he's done. And then this little voice comes in. What, what, who's this voice, Paul? What is he saying to Shigaraki? I can, uh, come to me, let me lend you your power or something along those lines. And, and at a moment, you can clearly see that it was not Shigaraki speaking for sure. It was the one and all, the enemy of the whole show so far. All for one. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. That... <laughs> I know you forget it. I forget <laughs> no, the I name was, too. Like I, <laughs> I know that was big the map, so that was like wins. Like it's all for one, one for all, one, one of those. But anyways, yeah, I think all for one, right? Yeah, Correct it's all for wrong. one. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, just double check. Okay, so yes, he appears, and then he starts calling out to Deku, little brother, or well, that's what it sounds like. Well, it did happen, so something's happening over there, for sure. I think the power of all for one, actually, they're taking control of Shigaraki. Um, and then he starts attacking. And then... I can't, I can't even say it, David. Okay. Go ahead and I'll continue go. this for me. Okay, so... <laughs> first, his first victim is Endeavor. Endeavor gets stabbed three times. And he's like, what? You should be dead. And then, like you said, he says, little brother. And he's going after uh, Deku. And then... This is poetic, the way they do this. Because... In the panels, you don't see Bakugo speak, but it says he says in that moment, and then you see the panel, his worried face, and he's he's using his 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 uh the his gren- his grenades or his by his quirk to get to Deku. And he says without it's like without knowing or without thinking, like my body moved without knowing where to go or something like that, you know, with, without thinking. And then you see Bakugo get impaled. He gets impaled three times, and that's how the chapter ends. <laughs> Uh, the moment that I read that part, I was like, no, you can't do this to me. Although we, we probably talked about it last time as well, like, you know, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to try to defend himself. Could be, uh, you know, Endeavor or anybody else. And then, you know, back ago, like, we actually mentioned that as well. Like, it could be a possibility. But the way that they did, well, first of all, the previous chapter, trying to make him understand that he has grown a lot. And then being able to see him making that particular sacrifice. Oh, man. It gave the shivers. I was like, no, they're, they're breaking my heart. I hope he doesn't, you know, die or something. But yes. the thing that I also like about this part is that the line that he actually said is something that Deku said initially in My Hero Academia mm-hmm. when they first started, when he was trying to defend Bakugo uh, before he got his powers. So it was, I like that particular part because, like you mentioned, it seems very poetic. It's going back to what he, Deku used to say. And you can see that Bakugo has grown by making that sacrifice. <laughs> So, a lot of people are very, very affected by this. But let's let's think about this rationally and think what is what happened, what power is being used. Let's analyze this a little bit. So, I can't tell specifically what quirk he's using. I can only say that the way that it's drawn is really reminiscent of the of the quirk that that All for One used to basically activate. A quirk. It just has like the same like texture and the same style. I don't know exactly if that's it or not. But uh, correct me, but does it look the same? Because he, he cause... no, I think for 
uh, he kind of does, but the thing that really got to me was the text. You know, being able to call little brother. You know, you don't, mm -hmm. you know, you don't get to hear that very often, especially in this panel. I mean, Shigaraki should be able to. He wouldn't be able to say that. So, like, maybe he allowed. He did. Uh, you he, know, all, he allowed all for one to take allowed, over. Right, and that's what really make him say that in the way that he acted up. And, and not to mention, I think in the previous episode. So some previous chapters when All for One is meeting uh, All Might in jail, he said that he has a plan to escape, even though he's all locked up away. You know, I'm, nobody actually believes him, but maybe that this is his way of like his transfer, like he connecting. transfers his right, right. That actually actually Something makes that. sense. So Shigaraki wasn't. I guess I I kind of hope it isn't this like completely because this is. It could backfire because you know how they did that with, uh, with Naruto with Madara, like you had the white uh, Zetsu and basically Madara was the body for Kaguya to come back, which was kind of crappy as a last main villain because they built up Madara for so long. Even though people were like able to predict, oh, the he's using this lore and this story, and this is why Kaguya is gonna come back. Like I know people predicted it, but I'm hoping they don't. Do something like that. I hope it's like a temporary thing that he does with Shigaraki where he lets all for one like use the body for a minute. But let's uh Yeah, let's I also want to believe that as, as well too. Because I do want to see Shigaraki Well I know he might come back like 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 I mentioned before, I think he's gonna get hurt really bad and then he's gonna come back later on. It's gonna be like a final fight. Right. Um So I think that still part of what I think it might happen. But yeah, I, th I think it's only temporary. I want to believe it's a temporary borrowing of the body while attacking everybody else. But yeah, yeah. the fact that Akugo was able to make that sacrifice, yeah, talk to love about him and how much he cares about Deku. So, it's like Snape. <laughs> oh, Snape, we could he debate. He cares about the boy. You can see, you can but people debate that all all day long about Snape. But let let let's let's think. So this. I, I don't think he's dead. I really don't think because of the title. I want so, to believe that he's not dead. Well, yeah. Yeah, let's look at let's look at the title. The title of the of the, of the chapter is is Katsuki Bakugo Uprising. We've had ones with like something like that with with Shigaraki. We've had um, we've had ones that end with like Midoriya Deku or Midoriya um, uh, uh, origin story or the Shoto Toroki origin or whatever like that. So. The fact that it's called yeah, Uprising, yeah. I, it makes me believe that he's not going to be dead. That he's going to get hurt. I think he's going to get hurt. But it might also... Yeah, I think he's just going to be really, really hurt. I'm hoping. I honestly still believe, even though I don't want to believe this, is I still think Eurizia is the one that's going to die. I think yeah, I think we're right that someone yeah. is going to die. But the Eraser Head looks like he's almost dead. And I think he is going to die based on everything that we've seen. Um, and the state that he's in. Baku, we don't know. We just know that he's been stabbed. We just saw Endeavor get stabbed. And he was still talking. It doesn't look like he was fatally wounded. But. So they're giving us all these people that are possibly dead. And so. And Gran Torino. Yeah. We haven't seen Gran Torino. So. Well, we saw him talk. So we happen. know that he's hurt. We know his hurt was kind of bad. Okay. So. This is what I'm predicting. You know how a while ago, a while ago, when the second My Hero Academia movie, people were saying that, that some of the aspects in that movie are going to be part, like, they were supposed to be part of the ending of My Hero Academia. Uh-huh. So, I do think that maybe some of the aspects of that may be included in this particular saga. I would like to see, this is what I would like to see, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but you know how in the movie, when they were fighting the bad guy, I don't remember his name right now. Nine. They could transfer some of his power to Bakugo. I would like to see something like that. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it would be cool to give him some. Maybe he's going to be wounded for a while, and then like they could like I need to I need some help or something. I don't know. That would be kind of cool if he like goes weak, but through the, all of this he gets some energy and starts fighting with Deku. And it would be like kind of like Goku and Vegeta. He also has power as well too, and. Uh, that's something that I would like to see, but very you know, hard to visualize. I know people talked about how the 
different quirks they they have one of them is like they don't want deku to have regenerative quirk a regeneration quirk because because that would make him op uh but they're saying but maybe there's like a a quirk that has like a drawback maybe the fourth had it so i was thinking maybe what deku can do is he can heal someone but the drawback is that he takes on that injury and so i don't know where i I, again that that may be something and maybe he'll take it or maybe there's or maybe he can heal them and then he heal himself but it's only like a time limit thing people had all these weird like theories like that or he basically like is um invulnerable to getting hit but after that involvement only lasts so long and then when it does wear out then all of that damage it all comes at once so i don't know because there's no one here to 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 heal them like recovery girl's gone the only one that could kind of and i don't know if this if it works this way uh would be airy because airy can rewind time not necessarily heal them but rewind them time to a time when they weren't injured so maybe this is like another step in seeing us airy come to the battlefield but she's with all my right now right so maybe that's out of the question yeah but i do believe Ari's gonna play a, an important role i i think so i think what's the point of just having her for a particular part t- trying to train her i think she's gonna come back in one way or another and being able to help them out i don't know if it's gonna happen in this battle or in the future but for sure i can see her helping the heroes at the time to need for sure yeah oh true. man but I gotta say, this this chapter really got to me. And the, the thing that sucks to me the most is like after that, I was reading some of the comments. There's so many people that were crying and they were like, no, they can't do this to my boy. They can't attack and, you know, trying to hurt Bakugo this much. He can't die. Not yet. At least. I, I will say I was reading when I got to the second to last page when you see, when you see Endeavor get impaled and then you see that part where he's going after Deku. And then you just see that look on Tabaku's face and he's just talking. He's like, at that moment, I'm like, oh, no. I was scared to, to turn. I was like, to just swipe to the next page. You're like, come on, no, you can't do this to me. Maybe, like, he saves. Maybe that's why he's caught up resin because he saves Deku. And I was like, maybe. And then I turned and I'm like, oh, gosh, no. Ah, oh, it's so hard. Like, I, like I, I, I haven't gotten too emotional on a lot of, like, manga stuff. But this one was, was hard to read. I was just... I was like, no, this can't be right. There has to be another page or something. No, it just ends like that. I was like, no. I know. Like, especially during this chapters. I think, like we mentioned before, each chapter is getting better and better. Mm-hmm. And the way that it would, it would, everything was drawn in this chapter was amazing. Seeing like the way that Bakugo's face was re- uh, drawn at the very end. It's, it's like, wow, they're, they're doing a good job. They should just keep it up. Yeah, they shouldn't, cool. for any reason, decline their drawing skills in there. Yeah, Horikoshi's doing a great job, so I hope he keeps it up. I can't wait for next week, mostly because I want to know if Bakugo was alive or not. But we'll report on that and let you know. But before we leave, what what score do you give this chapter, Paul? I'll probably give him 8.5. I mean, no, no, I'll probably look a higher, but the way they did to, uh, to Bakugo still affects me. I'm going to yeah. like, make it hella higher because it's a good chapter. It's a good chapter. Why Bakugo? I, I understand why, but still it hurts. <laughs> so something along those lines. Okay, I'm giving it a, what about you? I'm giving it a nine. A nine. It's yeah. it's a solid chapter. It's probably what it's gonna be hard to reread it, but it's it just had so much good stuff, so much development for Bakugo. So all you Bakugo fans, you're gonna love this chapter and hate it because of what they did to your boy. Yeah. Love and hate, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Alright, well that's it He's for this still alive. video. Yeah. So that's it for this video. Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. If you hated it, you loved it, that, let us know and then we'll we'll talk about it next week. And hopefully next week we have good news. So yeah, signing off. It better off. be good news. Yeah, yeah. So signing off, this is David the Smash Fan. And this is Poro Chang, a.k.a. Japorion, or so they call. I call you Hipster Paul. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. All right. And this is Chibina Podcast.